guys and welcome to Elgonor in the studio. My name is Tim Karn. Today we're going to cover the basics of making a modern tech house track, in particular in the style of artists like Fisher and Chris Lake. Tech house these days is about punchy straight and simple percussion patterns, warm bass and monophonic synth leads and sounds. You often don't find a lot of chords that, as that tends to make the track sound a bit like deep house. I'm not going to try and make a full song, but rather just kind of show you a few of the key sounds that you might find in a track from Fisher or Chris Lake, who is apparently his engineer. Uh, because some of these sounds make more sense with a bit of song structure, we'll be working in arrangement view today. Alright, let's start with the drums. Alright, so I'm going to use Atlas just because it's fast to find the drum samples. So load this up, I'm going to go to Maps, I'm going to choose this map I've made here called Machine House. So these are some machine sample packs that I've turn into a map, ones that kind of sound good for house music. Load that up. Okay, we'll start off with a kick. Let's find a kick. A bit too thin and short. Probably too subby and long. Yep, they sound about right. That's pretty good, good and punchy. All right, we'll try that one. Okay, keep that in that slot there. I might just increase the volume on this channel as well using a utility. So just up the gain. All right, while we're here, let's get a clap and a, and a hi-hat. Whoa. That's pretty good. I'll remember that one. So is that. Okay, we'll just use it. All right. Kick, clap, um, hi hat. What have we got? These are all the closed ones. We need an open one. Nah. Maybe they're closer to being symbols and rise up that end. So I assume in the middle. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll go with that. All right. Cool. Classic sounds. Okay, so let's get a loop going. I'm gonna make a MIDI clip. Command Shift M. Close that for now. Turn on the preview. Okay, C3 should trigger the kick. And it does. Alright, kick. Duplicate one, two, three, four. Get that clap in there. Alright, might take that clap actually to shift it back a little bit, holding command. Just to get a bit of groove. What have we got? That'll do. All right. We can change it later. Maybe we will. All right. So I'm going to stretch this out to be four bars long. Turn the loop on. I might also, while I'm in here, duplicate the loop internally and make it four bars long so that I can add a extra note at the end. Yeah. That'll do. Just for a bit of when it goes around in a circle, it just sounds a bit. More interesting. Okay. I might actually change that hat right now. And it sounds a bit too garagey. It's too it's too classic. What else have we got? That's not too bad. Interesting thing about Atlas here. See, that's a pretty good hat. But if you look at the sample. It actually was a snare, but it sounds as good as it had to me. All right. Okay. Um, let's get a baseline going. So for all these sort of sounds we're going to make, we're going to use, um, what am I up to? All right. MIDI. Um, massive, because everyone has massive. So let's get into that. Native instruments. Massive. All right. Baseline. Okay, so we're going to work in G because all of um, the, the reference tracks are in G, so it's a good comparison. Nowhere near a bass line. Okay, let's make this a square wave. 
And we're going to reroute this filter section into serial and out mix two. Dial those up. Turn on low pass four. Dial, dial up the cutoff. All right. And we're going to go to global. Well, we're already there. We'll dial that down a couple octaves, minus 24. All right. Bass. Um, to give it a bit more character, I'm going to dial in a second oscillator. Um, I'm just going to choose one of these kind of uh, mathematical ones. Perhaps we'll try uh, Rough Math 3. Turn it up. Maybe turn it up. Not quite full. 2. Okay, it's just going to add a little bit of warmth and character to the bass, so it's not just a pure square wave. So I turn it off. Yeah, adds that warmth, almost a tightness. Yeah, that's going to sound like Fisher. Great. Um, I'm not going to do that melody. I'm just going to do a straight, um, just like a few stab notes. So we'll get a MIDI thing in here, MIDI clip, and punch in a few notes. I'll just do that. I'll record it. Cool. Because it went round in a circle, I'm just and started to eat into the previous notes. So I'm just going to undo that. Cool. And then that's the loop. I'm going to select them all. Command U to quantize, and that is our bass note. Sounds pretty good. Let's split up that kick drum so we can do some side chaining. So back to the Atlas. Uh, yeah. Kick. Out channel two. Great. Um, okay, we need an audio channel. Sweet. We are from Atlas. Channel two, monitor in. Okay, and now the kick is too quiet. So get our utility, check it on that channel, dial the gain up. is too loud. Cool. So we've got side chaining compressor onto the base. Uh, let's open up that little panel. Side chain on. What are you from? Let's label this. Kick. I guess while we're here, we'll call this base. This could be drums. All right, base. There's your kick. Sweet. Okay, next on the list. Um, let's make the trumpet sort of impact sound you get um, in the breakdowns of, the start of breakdowns of some of these tracks. It's quite an easy sound to make. So I'm gonna go, come on, shift, MIDI check. Massive, what a surprise. Okay, what we want is a saw wave. but it is too high, so we're gonna go down an octave. Yep, that's too low. All right, um, so a lot of the synth sounds that get used in Fisher or Chris Lake tracks, they tend, I've done a bit of research, they pretty much all have unison on them, and it seems to be eight is the magic number. So I'm gonna to go to voicing, make that monophonic, um, and dial this up to eight. Not quite. We're gonna now we're gonna turn on pitch cutoff and spread that unison a bit. So I'm gonna push this out to the right. Cool. All right. So essentially we're basically there. Um, I'm gonna chuck on some filters. So I'll just reroute this again. We'll go low pass four. Just gets rid of some of the highs. We'll go high pass four, which funnily enough, gets rid of some of the lows. And I might increase the release on the volume envelope, which is always the fourth envelope. Sweet. And the last thing we need is some reverb. So we'll go here, reverb on, make it nice and big, dial it up. Sweet. All right. 
just to prove that it will work. I'm going to duplicate that drum track. Um, get the kick out of there. I'm going to just mute it using zero. Um, put a loop open. I'm going to make a MIDI clip. We'll just hit. Two notes of that. I'll just pull back the percussion just before that drop. Two beats. All right. Sweet. Actually, not sure I'm going to pull that back in the end. All right. Uh, next sound on the list. Okay, so in one of the recent tracks from Fisher um, called Losing It, there's this um, hook, this sort of flat monophonic um, synth stab, which has a lot of attack on it. It almost sounds like it's reversing, but it's actually just attack. Let's have a listen. Rhythm to the song. There it is coming in. Filtering during the breakdown. We'll do that as well. And delays and reverbs, all the basics. Snare roll, what a surprise. Okay, so we'll make that. I'm just going to add one other thing to the drums I just noticed. There's an extra little hat in there. You might as well get it in. A little closed hat. Sneaky little closed hat. A little sort of 909 closed hat. Where are my 99 close hats? Yeah. All right. Okay, so there's a little sneaky hat. Basically there. going to keep that kick going through but I'm going to high pass it rather than kind of having two separate clips so real quickly we're going to go to auto filter I'm going to turn this into high pass mode stick it in the middle somewhere turn the whole thing off automation um, since the on and off switch is the last thing we touch that's the thing we're seeing here in the automation view I'll turn it on because normally it should be on then I'm going to pop this down to its own channel select the area I want it off and then I'm going to hover near that dotted line because there's no automation yet until it goes blue. If you go on the line, you get, a, you get a dot that you can control. We don't want that. We want near it. Blue line, drag it down, and that will split it nicely on the, um, on the edges. So it's perfect. Okay, I'm an idiot. I did it backwards. Whoops. It should be off normally and on for the breakdown. Okay, I'm especially an idiot because actually the kick's not on that channel. All right, drums, group them both, chuck the filter onto the group. All right, we got there in the end. Okay, um, what's next in the list? All right, so that, that um, synth, okay. Let's get that going. All right, massive, again. Okay. So what is this synth? It's not a reverse sound, it's just a basic saw wave sound with um, a unison saw wave with an attack. So we're going to turn this on the first oscillator onto saw wave, reroute this MIDI section, sorry, filter section. Um, I'm going to choose the daft filter, not the 24, it's too steep. And these top two ones, they kind of sound digital if you're not too careful. So the daft one is kind of built as a bit more analogy. Um, what have you got? Nothing like it. All right, voicing. I'm actually dial this down an octave. Cool. Voicing, monophonic, unison, eight. We need our pitch cutoff. 
In this case, I'm going to dial the pan cut off up a little bit as well, give it a bit of spread. Pan position, sorry. Okay, we need to shape this. So, what we need now is um, an envelope. We're going to chuck an envelope on this first filter. So, I'm going to dial this down to about as low as you ever want to hear it. Take the first envelope using this little um, arrow icon, pop it onto the cutoff, dial that up. Okay, we're starting to get there, but obviously we've got the envelope backwards. It needs to be um, an attack and then decay down to zero, not, not what we've got currently, which is a zero attack and sustain. So, um, need some attack. Probably quicker than that. I'm going to dial the sustain to zero, which is actually this level knob. So it goes at A, D, S, level, R. Level to zero. Maybe a bit faster. Okay, there's some lows in there we should probably cut out. So I'm going to go high pass four. Cool. Um, possibly could use some noise on that. White noise, color, amp, color to full. Or oh, not amp to full, jeez. All right, get in there. thing in the list is uh, delay delay so delay um, not to, not delay synced just the regular delay unsynced don't dial these times down maybe we'll get an EQ on that and dial the highs up a bit sounding comparison no. Sounds like the, the volume has an envelope on it as well Pretty close. Maybe we'll chuck some chorus on there as well just to thicken it up. Or not. Nah, didn't work. All right. That's essentially the idea. All right, let's key this in. Okay, we'll take that, uh, we'll just consolidate that so it's one nice tidy clip. Command all, command U. Um, that's just to quantize it. All right. I would say it's close enough. basically the idea so basically we just got a detuned saw wave um, eight times unison um, with a filter and it's just got an envelope on it with a really fast attack um, but some attack and a really fast decay back down to zero cool um, next sound in the list there's a weird sound that you often you hear a few times in some of these Fisher tracks with this um, on the drop a kind of odd synth um, this is not a good example but this one is Like a roller coaster. Not there. Moving up and down, side to side, like a roller coaster. Not 
that sound, the one that goes that one. All right, let's make it. Um, so I'm going to get massive once again. Now this sound is two oscillators. So it's a saw wave and a second oscillator. And the notes are G, G, C, D, G. So not a chord. So we're gonna change the voicing to monophonic. Um, let's get this filter section routed up. So we'll go low pass, up next two. Okay, and the second oscillator is actually a saw wave as well, but it's two octaves down. But there's no release, so let's dial that up. Cool. Uh, we need a bit of high pass to get rid of the lows there, so we'll go. Great, and then we just need a phaser on that. Um, phaser, and a really slow one. Switch on the rate really low. Perhaps I'll take the lows out with an EQ rather than a cutoff, rather than a high pass. Too brutal otherwise um, and that's it let's get those notes down all right um, record oh, I missed the cue sweet let's uh, consolidate that up Command J, get rid of that, quantize it. Does that look right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, that's right, we had all this synths on here too. Okay, so obviously those two sounds kind of conflict. You probably wouldn't do them both, but for the exa for the purposes of this tutorial, I've got them both in there. Um, perhaps we can structure them later and have one sound for one section and another for another. Um, but let's make another sound on the list. All right, one of the sounds you hear in these Fisher tracks is this sort of high monophonic, um, stabby, almost almost a plaque, but not quite. Um, back in losing it, right there at the start. And then it gets really detuned. Okay, pretty easy. I wonder what synth we should use. Ha! Huh. Okay, um, for this sound, it's higher up in the octaves. Not even there, it's way up on uh, G4 or G5. Um, we'll just go global up two. Now, I find the best way to make this is actually with one of these weird um, analog electric um, waveforms. You could try, obviously, by the way, I'll just mention now in all these um, kind of tutorials, I'm showing you how to make some of the sounds in the Fisher tracks. Don't just rip them off. Try and craft them to something that's more your own. But um, in any case, I'm just gonna grab this one electric. And we need some unison. So if I didn't already mention, a lot of these Chris Lake um, Fisher sounds are pretty much all just unison based. So we go monophonic, unison eight, uh, pitch cutoff on. Get in there, get in there. Um, we need some filters, so we'll reroute this. Um, what do we want here? Low pass two, high pass two. Not quite as brutal as before. And if you adjust the position of this wavetable, you can get a kind of slightly more unique sound. You can find one that sounds good. Nah. It's not 
too bad. Um, and what we want to do is we want to automate this pitch cutoff knob here, which will increase the stereo um, the, the the detuning amount. Okay, so we're just going to do this with a macro, just because it's easy to automate. So I'm going to put this little macro here with the little um, arrow icon onto that little box. Put this at the kind of lowest position it'll ever be. We'll say there. Dial this up to maybe there. So now if I pop this into Massive, into Ableton, click on that. Cool. Um, good enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's get it into the melody. Let's get into the, the arrangement view. So, I might do it in the breakdown actually. Let's double the length of this breakdown. Now, here's a tip. Um, duplicate time, delete time. Really, really handy. You can find it in the edit menu here. It's command shift D or command shift delete. I just want to duplicate the length of this breakdown. Go command shift D. Um, the cool thing about that is if you had a whole bunch of structure here, it would just push it along. Or if you had a whole section you don't want, you can delete it and it will just kind of join the join the dots. Um, all right, let's get this thing in here. Uh, right. That'll do. Don't need that last little bit. We'll consolidate that. Command J, delete that. All right. Quantize that. Um, cool. Loop on. Loop it out. All right. Get a bit of um, filtering on this. What I might actually do is I might actually, because you wouldn't have all these three sounds on all your songs, so I might actually put these two on top of each other, put them in the same group, um, and we can just turn them on and off and hear the difference between two songs. And I'm going to filter the group. So I'm going to select that. All right, they're in a group. Color differently. Oh, yeah, that'll do. All right, auto filter. Check it on there. All right. We'll leave it on at all times. Automation. Auto filter. Device on. Or just move, wiggle the knob. There it is. Okay. We'll just select the area. Hover near the line. Then drag down. And that'll split it on the corners. Delete one dot. And there you go. Nice easy ramp. Um, and we can just now toggle these two sounds, toggle between them and hear the difference. Um, so what does our newest sound sound like? I think this sound here could use a bit more bass in it. Might have taken too much out. And it's not long enough. Yeah, all right. Um, so, not sounding too bad. Let's, hey, what happened here? Why didn't you duplicate? Deck, loop on. All right. Um, let's get a snare roll going. So, because I mean, you know, every song has a snare roll. It's key. Plugins. Atlas. Machine house. All right. I need to find a good snare. What's going on? Oh, it's being high fast. Um, that's not too bad. I'll remember that. Just a quick comment how cool this is. This is about seven sample packs that I'm going between um, and all the snares are kind of grouped into the same place. So I'm kind of going between seven packs in, in the same window, quite handy. Nice sort of 808 style. Weird wet ones over there. Now it's in the right area. That's pretty good. 
go with that. All right. Snare roll. And what have we got? Let's have a listen. Okay, it's just a 16th snare roll. Easy. Let's label this. Snare. Midi clip. Command Shift M. Know your shortcuts. Um, let's get rid of that high pass for now. We'll go back to this. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna delete the automation, so I'm gonna group this and then I'm gonna turn the whole group off. That way I can kind of save the automation. Um, okay, let's consolidate all these. Just get rid of the kick. All right. That'll do the job. We'll loop that out. Um, that needs a filter on it as well. Okay, frequency. Dot to the top. Make my little box. Get rid of the corner. Ramp. I might cut everything off in that last two bars. Um, just because... Because that would be where the vocal would go. If you had one. Um, delete. Okay. Um, awesome. So, what else they got going on the breakdown is basically just delay and reverb and all that kind of stuff. So, to cheat, I have a device here on this master, on my master channel, which I've made. Um, I use this when I'm working in session view, and you can make your own one as well. Essentially, it's a few knobs, um, about six. Um, that I map up to a controller that I have on hand at all times. Um, if you guys have ever seen Endless Smile, uh, made by the same guy as Data Life who did Sausage Fetner, um, this is kind of the same idea, um, but with a bit more control. So I've got a uplifter knob. I'll play the breakdown. If I turn it up, that's just reverb um, and high pass, so it's not that complicated. I've got a ping pong delay here. A low filter, which is good for um, the way they've kind of been routed um, and chained together. Um, you can filter and the delay will carry on. Um, beat repeat. And the last cool one, uh, noise ramp, um, is actually a reverb. And as soon as you dial it away from zero, it catches the sound. And then um, you can then filter sweep it. Um, in another session, I'll show you how to make this yourself. It's um, it's pretty handy, but let's just use it. Um, I will automate it. Okay. Uplift. Pop that out. Wide delay. Pop that out. And this isn't something you'd probably do if you're making the song properly. You'd actually do, you know, delay on certain channels and that kind of thing. But just to keep things easy, we'll just do it this way. Um, I'm going to select the whole distance of the breakdown, go near the, near the line, pop it up, make a ramp. All right, that should be the uplifter. Do the delay as well. Sweet. Um, from the top. That's basically it. Um, there was another sound. Let's have a quick listen to that. I'll take it back. Turn that sound off. And there you go. So there are some core sounds that have been made in the style of Fisher or Chris Lake. Um, bear in mind that this has only been made in about 20 minutes, so it's not going to sound as amazing. But um, And also, if you were to make this yourself, don't just rip them off. 
find unique ways to kind of tweak them and make them your own. You can mess around with the synths, even just a little bit will make it sound more like your own track. And yeah, if you wanted to turn this into a single, you would need a few more sounds in the breakdown um, and a nice good little short vocal to go before the drop, and then you'd have a hit. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.